The Challenge of the Yukon. Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge and justice ruled triumphant. Marie Marlowe halted her dogs, bending her head to protect her face from the merciless sting of the ice-flecked wind. Oh, oh, you're a skin. A small dog jumped from the sled, following her through the snow to the door of the cabin. Oh, my poor little Toby. Now, never mind. I, I don't like this cold any more than you do, but we'll soon be inside. There now, indoors with you, over to the fireplace. Uh, that uh, arm should be all right within a few days, Minilac. Philip Marlowe, what in the world are you doing? Oh, Marie, my dear, I, I didn't expect you back so soon. Uh, come in, my dear, and close the door. Come in. I'll come in all right. Or does a civilized person have a welcome in this cabin? What's the idea of this? This savage being here. Uh, Marie, please. This is Munilak, an Indian brave. He was wounded and... Indian? I knew I never should have come to this forsaken country with you in the first place. It isn't bad enough that there are wild beasts in the forest, but, but the country's full of Indians. You haven't seen many Indians, Marie. I assure you... And that... my good table linen. My linen tablecloth. You, why, you cut it up. Well, there was nothing else I could use for bandages. Look at it. Ruined. <laughs> You know, like, I think the arm will be all right now. Do you feel well enough to travel? Uh, me go now. Moonalak, thank white man. White man, remember what Moonalak tell him? Yes, 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 I'll remember. Not go there till Sergeant Preston comes. Of course not. Good. Talk, talk, talk. If you'll be good enough to open the door for this, uh, man, Philip. Well, if I can do anything more for you, Munilak, come to see me. He'll do no such thing. Hey, go now. Uh, goodbye. Good luck. And now, now perhaps you'll tell me what this is all about. Look at this tablecloth. It's a wonder you didn't rip the napkins apart, too. It's a fine thing when a woman finds her husband entertaining sex. Uh, Marie, I've already told you the, the man was wounded. He needed help. And you, with your kind heart. Oh, I knew I... What did he mean when he told you to... Uh... Remember what he said to you. Well? <sighs> well, he said he'd been hunting, that he'd stop at that stream about a mile away from the cabin going north. He found flakes of placer gold on the banks. But as he stood there looking at them, someone fired on him. <laughs> a likely story. I never met an Indian yet who didn't lie. Yeah, yeah. Indians are no different from whites. You find good and bad ones. And the bad ones are no worse than some people I've known. Don't contradict me. Why did he tell you not to go there until that uh, Sergeant Preston comes? I'm sure I don't know, my dear. Mm. Probably feels that it'll give him ample time to take the gold away himself. If he wanted the gold himself, he wouldn't have told me about it. Now, whatever his reason was for saying to wait, I don't know. But it must have been a sound one. And I suppose you intend to do just that. Wait for that Mountie to arrive. He may be in town very soon. Philip Marlowe. Ever since the day we set foot in this Yukon country, I, well, I've heard nothing but talk about what you do when you made a strike. Now, now, when one is as good as just dropped in your lap, you, you're just going to wait around for some Mountie to arrive. Uh, but, my dear, you No can... buts about it. You're not going to let an Indian beat you to that goal. If it's there, you're going to get it. Philip Marlowe began working the land Munilak had told him about, and he found it rich in placer gold. Three days passed, and in the cafe in Center City, two men sat talking at a small table. But I tell you, he's been there three days straight, Sam. And what's more, he's lifting the real McCoy out of that gravel. You ain't done nothing to make him suspicious, have you? Hey, listen, what do you take me for? So far as he knows, there ain't nothing between him and town except that cabin of his. Only that ain't no sign that he ain't gonna start nosing around. And I don't like it. Yeah. That's only one thing to do. Yeah, what's that? 
The engine ain't never been back, has he? I say we ought to give this Marlowe fellow some of the same treatment. You and that itchy finger of yours. I don't know any better way to settle a difference of opinion. No? Well, maybe you'd feel different about it if you knew Preston's in town. Preston? Yeah. Who'd it be better to have nosing around, Marlowe or Preston? That Moundy's poison, Mark, and I don't want to tangle with him. Supposing Marlowe was found with a bullet through his head by that creek. The red coat would know inside of two minutes from what direction the bullet come. Now, sir... We want to keep him away from the cave, not lead him to it. Yeah, I see what you mean. He's in town for a reason. I'd lay your money on it that he's got an idea we're holed up here. As long as he don't know who he's looking for, we're all right. Seems like all the more reason we ought to keep Marlowe away from there. We don't have to wait till he gets to the creek to do it. Listen, I don't want to take any chances. See? Chances? Huh. As long as he goes there, you're taking a chance every day. What's wrong with getting him at his own cabin? His wife came into town this afternoon to stay with the reverend's wife. While the song singers holding services over in Cranford. Then yeah. Marlowe will be by himself tonight, eh? Sure. Yeah, well, that's an idea. And the more I think of it, the better I like it. Meanwhile, in the cabin that served as headquarters in Center City, Sergeant Preston talked with the Indian Munilak. Me wait here in town. Me here you come. Sergeant Preston go with Munilak. And I won't be able to get away till this evening, Munilak. Right now I'm interested in finding out about every stranger who's come into or gone through Center City in the last three weeks. Uh, you trail fella? Mm, two of them to be exact. Trail robbers. They've stolen gold and furs from sled drivers from Melville to Center City. Uh, but, uh... King Lyle take to the trail with you this evening, if it'll make you feel any better. Though that shooting may have been accidental. No accident. One bullet hit Moonalak. Moonalak dropped to ground. Then two more bullets fired. Moonalak hunted like caribou. No good. White men try to kill. Mm. That is strange. Moonalak, wait. Go with Sergeant Preston. We'll be ready. It was early that night, and in Philip Marlowe's cabin, the middle-aged prospector faced two masked men, one of whom held a gun. If it's gold you're after, you'll find a tin box on the top shelf of the cupboard over there. Go on over and get it, Mark. Yeah, sure. It ain't only gold we want, Marlowe. Well, there's nothing else of any value here. But let me warn you, you won't get away with this. You just let us worry about that, huh? Is it there, Mark? Yeah, it's here. But look, Sam, I ain't seen any of these here white handkerchiefs since we left the state. Pretty fancy, huh? Thanks, Chip. You ignorant fool at the table next to me. Tell that money is to shut up, Marlowe, before we give him what we're going to give you. Quiet, Toby. You better put that napkin back. He's you taking what belongs to my wife. Oh, so you don't like it, huh, Poots? Why, you... I'll teach you to tear stuff from my hands. Yeah, it takes a brave man to kick a dog, especially when he's got somebody covering him with a gun. Well, you've got what you came for. Now, get out of here. You didn't understand what I said, buddy. It's your turn now. When Sergeant Preston and Mulelac stopped at Phil Marlowe's cabin a half hour later, they found the man motionless on the floor while the dog, Toby, lay whimpering beside him. He was lucky. Another quarter of an inch and he wouldn't have had a chance. Left my medicine kit in town. I can do something to... What's that thing, old boy, me? Yeah, may serve. Uh, bring me some water from the kettle over there, Moonlac. They do. Clean that up a bit. There we are. As the great Malamute stood silently watching his master take the soft piece of cloth he'd found on the floor... King wished there was some way he could convey his thoughts to Preston. Because as he picked up the cloth in his teeth, he caught the scent of the dog Toby as well as the scent of a man. And the man scent that filled his keen nostrils was not the one of the wounded prospector. Uh, I think you'll be unconscious for a while, Munilak. You stay here with him. Uh. King and I are going to follow whatever tracks we can find in the snow. Come on, fellow. <laughs> Meanwhile,
Meanwhile, in a cave not far from Marlowe's cabin, Sam Osborne and Mark were talking. Yeah, it's snowing, Mark. Looks to me like there might be a blizzard coming up. Listen to that wind. Yeah, it'd be a fine thing if we had to hole up here for a couple of days. Yeah, quit beeping, will you? As long as nobody's seen us, we're safe. The Mountie will be called over to Marlowe's. He'll be able to judge about the time Marlowe was killed. If you check and find out two men turned up in town a short time after that, he might start asking questions. What are you going through your pockets for? That handkerchief I picked up. Or what was left of it after the mutt got through pulling it to pieces. I got a sworn I put it in my pocket. Can't get that kind of stuff up here, you know, Sam. Cave full of furs and gold, and you're looking for a torn table napkin. When we get back to the States, you'll get hundreds of them there. That ain't doing me any good now, is it? Well, I guess I lost it. The sooner we got out of this country, the better I'll like it. I'm beginning to get nervous with that mounty tailing. Ah, up. what are you worrying about? That snow's on our side, come to think of it. Preston will have a sweet time connecting us with what happened in Marlowe's now that our tracks are covered. Your tracks aren't all that are covered. Reach! What? Oh, Preston, how did you find it? Reach for that gun. Keep your hands high. Well, looks like this is the end of the trail. When I set out to follow you two tonight, I never expected I'd find what I've been looking for for weeks. How did you get here? Our tracks were covered. They weren't all covered. It didn't begin snowing until we were about halfway here. From there on, it was a hunch more than anything else. Just when I was ready to give up, King found this. Hey, that's... Yes, what... the other half of the table napkin we found in Marlowe's cabin. It was caught in some brush not far from here. You mean that dog led you? That's exactly what I mean. How he did it, I'll never know. I don't mean we had the napkin. Maybe somebody no, else... Oh, nobody else had it. Philip Marlowe isn't dead, and you're both going back to Marlowe's cabin with me now. Once he's identified you, you'll be charged with attempted murder. Come on, King. When Sergeant Preston arrived at the small cabin a short time later, he found Marie Marlowe crying bitterly as she tended her husband's wound. It's all my fault for leaving you alone. When Reverend Talbot got back to town, I came right home, but I... Now, Marie, my dear, just as well you weren't here. There, there are the men, Sergeant. I recognize their Mackinaws, even without hearing them say a word. What I don't understand is why they tried to kill me. I didn't have much gold here in the cabin. Well, still, I heard in town that you'd made a strike up this way. Yes, sir. Munilak told me about the location. By that little creek about a mile from here. I guess you don't know where it is. But believe me, it's the luckiest thing that ever happened to me. Well, I do know where it is. And I think that's the explanation for what happened tonight. That creek is just a stone's throw from the cave where these two had hidden thousands of dollars worth of loot. And so long as you worked the claim, there was a danger of you discovering the cave. Me tell him not go there till you come. Philip. Oh, Philip. Then that was what the Indian meant. And, and I talked you into working it. Oh, my dear. I didn't know. It's all right, Marie. Everything came out very well. I'll be up and about in a few days. Sergeant Preston has his prisoners, and Unilac's going to be my partner in the claim. Yes, everything's worked out all right. <coughs> mm-hmm, fella. Thanks to you, the case is closed. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at this same time and originate in our transcription studios. <laughs>